Hey everybody. Here's that Dell laptop that I got for $40 recently. This is a Dell Inspiron. Let me see what model it is. It's not that old. I mean, it's about three years old. This is an Inspiron 1525. It's stock. It comes, this one here comes with a Pentium dual core CPU, one gig of RAM, and an 80 gig hard drive. Those are kind of low specs, especially if you're running Windows Vista or Windows 7. So, in this video, I'm going to be replacing the CPU. I've already added in some power, um, power capacity memory sticks, but I'll show you how how to replace the memory on this laptop too. And what's so funny about this particular laptop? It is so simple. The design of it is so simple. Dell actually got a smart person in on the designing of this laptop. They actually put all of the serviceable components under one door. Well, with the exception of the hard drive, which is over here. But normally, when it comes to laptops, the only thing you can really easily access is your system memory. And if you're lucky, you can access your Wi Fi card. And normally, if you want to replace your CPU, you have to do a, almost a whole teardown on a laptop. If you want to see what that's like, go watch my other video on the Dell Latitude D630 where I'm replacing the CPU and the screen cable. You'll laugh because it took a, it takes a pretty good while to tear a laptop down. All the little screws, all the little components like the keyboard, the um, palm rest, all that stuff just to get to the CPU core. But on this laptop, you can replace the CPU without having to even tear it down. All you do is you take off these screws. Well, of course, there's a lock screw in this area, but I've already removed it. Of course, also, don't forget to remove the battery for you doing any serious repair work on a laptop. Battery just pulls right out and just set it to the side. Continue on with removing these screws. These screws stay in the door itself, the door that covers this interior of the computer. Which, of course, if you haven't already, set your YouTube player to 720p to get the best clarity of the video. My last video on working on a laptop, well, the, um, the last really good video I made of actually servicing a laptop was adding RAM to a laptop. And that was done back in late 2009 with a standard 480p camera. It was actually the video function on a regular camera. Anyways, now I'm using DXG high def cameras, which these aren't these aren't um, as good as your high dollar high definition camcorders, but these do very well for what they are. Of course, this door has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, well, eight screws. Okay, now the screws are loose. Carefully, carefully pl mm, pry this off and set it to the side. And have a look at this. Here's your CPU cooler. There's the processor. There's the Norpage chip. Set some memory. And your Wi Fi card. And there's actually two more slots available for additional wireless cards, such as 3G cards. That sort of stuff. Just have a look at this, man. This is awesome. The ability to replace your CPU, upgrade your memory, and replace your wireless card under one door. I mean, it's just unreal. I think all laptops should be like this. They really should. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and remove this core. I've actually already unscrewed all the screws. You have five screws here four around the CPU itself and one back here on the other side of the Norbridge chip. This will lift right out. And of course set to the side. Now let me go ahead and show y'all something to keep in mind with 
notebooks when you go to replace your CPU or apply a new thermal compound. While it is perfectly safe to reapply thermal compound to most CPUs in notebooks, do not mess with the Norbridge chip. Have a look here at this Norbridge. You'll see this bluish looking pillow thing. That is actually like a spongy thing that actually transfers heat. And without it, you'll have a gap between your heat pipe and your chip. And should you absolutely have to get rid of this for any sort of reason, you'll need some copper shims, at least one or two, to go in between the heat pipe or well, this little contact service and the chip. It's that way you'll actually have a contact with the chip so you can cool it properly. Anytime you replace the thermal compound on a CPU in a notebook, I always apply some thermal compound and then attach the cooler, then remove it. So that way you can see if there's thermal paste touching the heat pipe. If you got a good footprint on this right here, you'll know for sure that the CPU is making contact. In this case, it should be perfectly fine to remove this stuff here and apply some thermal compound. So we'll go ahead and first replace our CPU. To replace a CPU in a notebook, all you need is a small flathead screwdriver to unlock the CPU. You'll hear a click. Now the CPU is unlocked. Now I'll go ahead and lift it out of place. This is the Pentium D processor which I'll be installing into the Latitude D630 which I pulled the Core 2 Duo processor out of. Here's the Core 2 Duo processor, which these are both socket P chips. And what's funny is they're actually based on a 478 pin array. Kind of reminds you of the old older Pentium 4s. So I'll go ahead and drop this into place. Very simple approach. Another thing you'll notice right away is with notebook processors, you don't have that heat spreader like you do on desktop chips. It's because desktop chips usually make contact with the heat sink while in notebooks, they make contact with a heat pipe. To reinstall the CPU, use your screwdriver to turn the screw back the other direction. Now the CPU is locked into place. Now we can install the cooler. Of course, installing thermal compound to the CPU in a laptop is pretty much the same concept as in the desktop. You get the old paste off of the CPU die, which I've actually serviced the CPU before in a different machine. So that's why there's actual thermal paste on it already. Normally you have to, you'd have to scrape off the old junk from the CPU, which would still have to do it on the heatsink though. I'll go ahead and get this stuff off the heatsink. Well, actually, I'll have to pry it off with my fingernail because this stuff here is so thick. I mean, it is big time thick. Okay, now I got the junk scraped off of the heat pipe. So now I'll take some glass cleaner. I recommend rubbing alcohol, but I don't have any, so I use gra um, glass cleaner. I've used glass cleaner for quite a bit, and I've never had any issues with it for quite a while, anyway. And of course, I've serviced quite a few CPUs over time. Make sure that die is nice and clean. This reminds me of the old days of installing Athlon XP CPUs and Pentium 3 processors. At least back then, a syringe of thermal paste will last you a lot longer. Go ahead and wipe down the heat pipe. Get this out of camera for just a moment. So you can see what I'm doing a little bit easier. And also, it doesn't hurt to clean the little contact area for the Norbridge chip. Make sure it's good and clean. Now I'll apply some thermal paste to the CPU and reinstall the cooler. When you apply thermal paste to a processor, especially one like this where you have a exposed die, it's important to be sure you get thermal paste spread across that die really good. Now I'll go ahead and 
attach the heat pipe. Now after we get finished with this, I'll show you how to replace the memory on one of these, which is real simple. Like I say, when it comes to computers, upgrading your memory is probably one of the easiest upgrades you can do to your computer. One of the easiest things you can do. Try to get this to sit down like it's supposed to. Now we're talking. Yeah, I noticed on this attachment we have numbers one two three and four I believe this is a sequence you're supposed to go in it's highly recommended that you follow that sequence that way you don't put too much stress on a certain side of the processor die when you install the heatsink or the cooler rather so I'll go ahead and screw this side down not all the way though we want to kinda even out the tension while we're installing this thing Gonna get all these started. And finish one. Do it tightens down. Come over here to number two. Excuse me for blocking the light, but now that one's there starting to tighten down. Be careful not to put too much stress on your board if it flexes. Finish tightening down number three. And come over here to number four and finish tightening it in down. Which I believe it's pretty good to go. And last but not least, let's tighten down the screw on the other side of the North Bridge chip. Okay, you just got to see me replace the CPU on the Dell Inspiron 1525 notebook. And here's how you replace the memory on a notebook. The reason why I'm recording this separate video is because I, I guess I forgot to record me changing out the memory on that Dell notebook or I lost the video itself. So here is how you can change the memory on your notebook. All you have to do is, of course, you take the door off and then here's your memory stick. You pull two uh, little levers out on both sides, and then the memory pops up and pull it out. This is DDR2 memory, and the process is the same for DDR and DDR3 on notebooks. It's pretty much the same process. And of course, to reinstall the memory, of course, have the notch lined up like it's supposed to be. Gently press it down into place, and push down and it locks right into place. Then of course you replace the door on the notebook and then power it up. That's all there is to it. So anyways you got to see how the CPU is replaced on the Dell Inspiron 1525 and this is also how you replace the memory on it.